that is leading many of you, I want to talk about the exploitative, the exploitative nature of the eight-hour workday. So, um, if you work for a salary like I do, uh, or even uh, work an average wage job, uh, you you work eight hours a day, right? So originally. When the eight-hour workday was being negotiated, back when people were working in factories for 12, 16 hours a day at a time, and were doing this backbreaking labor, the idea of having an eight-hour workday was to divide your day into thirds, right? Eight hours for rest, eight hours for uh, relaxation, and eight hours for work. This is what seemed fair at the time. Now, even back then, there were some things that made that a little less fair. For example, uh, jobs were being automated, uh, especially in uh, clothing factories uh, and, and textiles and things where machines were doing a lot of the work. But the idea was you'd only work eight hours and that was gonna be enough for the capitalist class that we were making all the wealth for. Over time, as things have become more automated and productivity has increased, Eight hours has become increasingly exploitative. And the reason this is true is partially because we no longer live very close to our places of work, right? We don't all live in the city and these big factories are, you know, within walking distance or what have you. Or do you live near in a factory town uh, or you live next to the mine or, or, or you live on the farm, whatever it is, right? We don't live particularly close to our work, our work, uh, our workspaces. So there's commute times, lunches are not paid for, right? So Let's break down what a day looks like and how much it's actually eating out of your other time. Uh, and I'll remind you that work, those, that, they, that eight hours of work, the, the way you should think about it is it should be considered the eight hours that you dedicate to your employer. Not necessarily that you're getting anything done, not, that, not necessarily that you're getting things done for every second of the eight hours, and most studies shows that employees don't do that, but we should think about it as, this is the amount of time that you dedicate to your employer, okay? So let's let's think about the things that you dedicate that are dedicated more or less to your employer, right? Your commute to and from work. This is not really time you have your to yourself. Uh, it's not time that can be really thought well about being in your relaxation time because of the way that you know you can't do some of the other things that you would do if you're commuting. Now if you're not driving, if you're taking the train or something, maybe you, you, know, you have some moments where you can do something that's a little bit more relaxing, but it, it's not really relaxation time. It is time you're dedicating to your employer. It's time you're taking out of your day to get to your job so that you can do your work. The other one is a lunch break. Most lunch breaks are not paid. So it, it seems like it should be a relaxation time, but it's placed right in the middle of your workday. And oftentimes it's very difficult to escape the workplace to actually have that time to yourself. Now, it may be a little different with work from, with people maybe find that from work from home, but a lot of the times the issue becomes that if you're in an office or if you're in a job where you can't leave or whatever, your work time, your, your lunch time as either quasi work time or you feel that it's still dedicated to your employer because you can't go off and do something relaxation, right? So for, for the sake of argument, let's say that you have an hour commute each direction and you have an hour lunch that is unpaid. So at this point, all that time is dedicated to your employer as well as your eight hour workday. So we're now looking at 11 hours, which is not great. So when you finally do get home, you have, what, five hours of relaxation before you're supposed to get your eight hours of rest, sleep. So, but, you know, oftentimes because either you live alone or you and your partner both work, um, the things that need to be done at home oftentimes uh, take up a lot of the other relaxation time, which doesn't make it relaxation time, it just makes it a different kind of work, right? Which your employer is not necessarily responsible for, but it's a, it should be a consideration you consider what is fair for the modern worker to be doing, especially in light of the amount of productivity and, uh, and, and capital that we are creating for the capitalist class. So when you get home, you may have to do laundry, you may have to do, uh, especially if you wear a uniform to work and have to wash it every day, uh, you may you know, have to make dinner. So the point is, is that 
even when you're at home, oftentimes your leisure is removed from you uh, because of the amount of other things you have to do. And in theory, we have the weekend for that, but oftentimes types of errands and things that you want to run on the weekends, not everywhere is open, right? There's, there's lots of reasons why the weekend isn't necessarily enough time for you to do all the things you need to maintain uh, your home when you don't have time during the work week. So the question is, do we still need an eight-hour workday? Is that still fair? So the answer is no. And the reason is because one, due to automation and due to the assistance of machines, the average worker is making their, uh, is making more capital than their ancestors were doing for, for the same job. Their, you know, their forefathers and mothers were doing for the same jobs. Um, machines have, including computers, have made, it, made us incredibly productive uh, members of our workspaces. And not only has we, have wages not increased for that, but also we're still working these, these long hours. And by the way, eight hours is what you're supposed to work. Many people find they're working longer than that, but instead of 40 hour weeks, they're working 50 hour weeks or 60 hour weeks. Some people work 80 hour weeks. And all of this takes away from, your, from the time you're supposed to have as a worker to rest, right? The original deal, which was eight hours of rest, eight hours of relaxation, and eight hours of work. Eight hours of work. So the solution here is one of two things. One, you can reduce the, the work day, uh, each individual work day to you know, any number of hours shorter than it is now, or you can, you can reduce the number of days that people work. Uh, recently, and I've covered it on last week's show, which obviously uh, doesn't exist, but you know, the, one of the largest unions over there negotiated a four-day work week with cycling schedules such that there wasn't like an extra day where the factory wasn't going. And this is great because it allows workers to do their uh, errands and other things on, day, on, a, on a day that's technically a weekday, but doesn't require them to be working. And this is, this is great for labor because it allows you to do other things or just have extra day of relaxation. And especially because we're making so much profit, so we're, we're creating so much capital, which in turn becomes so much profit for the capitalist class, we deserve this, right? We don't need to have to work terrible hours and to hate everything about our position in order for us to earn the right to have more leisure time. The promise of capitalism is that we would work smarter, we would work less, and that we'd be happier and we'd be healthier. But the truth is, the eight-hour workday forces us to take conveniences that we wouldn't ordinarily need, right? Delivery services for food, delivery services for laundry, uh, any little convenience that we can get. And the reason that we buy all these conveniences is because we always feel like we don't have enough time in our days. If we had more time in our days to do the types of things that we would want to do that we'd want to do that we didn't need the convenience for, we wouldn't always spend so much money. The reason the eight hour workday is so exploitative is not just because we're creating more capital than ever for the capitalist class who is not giving that back to us. It's not just because we don't have enough, because uh, we're dedicating more than eight hours of our day to the capitalist class. It's not just for those reasons. It's, it's because of the importance of to, is the importance to the capitalist class of having workers that feel constantly exhausted and that they need to cut corners for every little thing. And the way that as workers we cut corners is we spend our hard on money on little conveniences. And those little conveniences, like the gig economy, for example, make the capitalist class lots and lots of money. So we are forced more or less into these spending sprees for things that we don't want, that we don't necessarily need in order for the capitalist class to continue to exploit us because we are exploited on both ends. We're exploited at work because we dedicate more time than we should to our workplaces and we're exploited at home because we have so little time left and so little energy left when we come home that any little convenience that we can spend money on is going, in theory, makes us feel better about ourselves and makes us feel like we have more time, even though we don't. And all of these functions allow the capitalist class to get very rich off of us. Um, so the solution to this, of course, is to reduce the amount of hours that the average worker works. But in order to do that, we need organized labor, uh, which hopefully we get more of soon uh, with the pessimist story.